appeal in 2010 in support of their case, and we won. Uh, the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia has issued a decision granting leading global electronic cigarette brand Enjoy's motion for pre preliminary motion for preliminary injunction seeking to prevent the FDA from detaining or or refusing admission into the U.S. of its electronic cigarette products. We had the hearing in September of 2010, and actually on Pearl Harbor Day, December 7th, voted 3 nothing in our favor. The FDA tried to appeal again. They turned them down. They uh, announced they weren't going to appeal to the Supreme Court. There was a lot of celebrating going on. Enjoy heroes in this industry for, 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 for having carried that case to its uh, final conclusion. They really are, you know, because without that, I don't think anybody else could have stepped up to the plate. I remember thinking that this is the start of the industry. There's a new warning this morning that e-cigarettes may not be as safe as they seem. The New England Journal of Medicine says e-cigarette users are five to 15 times more likely to get formaldehyde-related cancers than long-term smokers. Formaldehyde is the toxic chemical found in the devices. Dr. This is the part in our journey where people that are actually using these devices reached out to us. They felt like it had saved their lives, yet it was under attack. At first, we were skeptical. Just like everyone else, we'd seen the headlines that vaping might be more dangerous than smoking cigarettes. And smoking cigarettes. This is a dangerous product. To the poisonous product of nicotine. New study shows that e-cigarettes are more deadly than regular more deadly than regular cigarettes? These really have me concerned. These products are exposing you to, to a variety of toxic chemicals. Understanding that over a billion people are gonna die this century from smoking, we knew we had to find the truth. Because I'm not a smoker or a vapor, we packed our bags and headed around the world to meet with leading scientists and health experts to find out what was really going on. I think the first thing uh, the world needs to know about vaping is that all of the harm and the billion lives that we're talking about um, in tobacco use comes from smoking, comes from setting fire to it and inhaling the smoke. So it's the, the toxic particles, the toxic gases, uh, that's what's doing the damage. The real problem is if you set tobacco alight and you inhale it, it's bad for you. If you put a piece of beef in the oven and you you overcook, you overcook it, and you eat it, it's bad for you. Anything you set, set a light and inhale or ingest, it's bad for you. Deal with the smoke, you solve the problem. Uh, we know how to deal with the smoke. So I, mean, I think people working on this, people working on this every morning, just like Clinton, when he first ran for president, had that sign saying, it's the economy, stupid, to remind him every day what to concentrate on every day what to concentrate on. It's really simple. It's the smoke, stupid. A normal cigarette has at least 4,000 toxicants, including it has nicotine as well. And if a consumer would take all of that on board, they are one out of two of those consumers will, will develop disease and die an early death. Solid evidence to back that up. If somebody would have said, Bill, can you think of a of a parameters of a product to replace cigarettes. Theoretically, I'd have said, well, it would be 99% less hazardous than cigarettes. It wouldn't be addicting non-smokers. It wouldn't encourage anybody to switch to cigarettes. And it would help lots of people quit smoking. That's the ideal solution to the cigarette epidemic in this world. It's called vaping. It's not smoking. There's no tobacco. Nothing is lit on fire. Vaping uses a battery, which powers an atomizer, which vaporizes a liquid, which may or may not have nicotine in it, has a flavoring, and is made with an FDA-approved food-grade liquid base. Well, I first became interested when some of the most hardened smokers that I saw as a, as a general practitioner started giving up with the use of these, and that, that really sort of sparked my fascination with this whole idea of turning the idea of quitting on its head instead of being about denial and withdrawal, but being about 
something exciting and something better than smoking. It's going to be one of the biggest uh, contributions to public health this century. It's a really transformative uh, technology. I mean, just think back a hundred or plus years uh, when the cigarette was first invented. That was transformative. Did away with all other kinds of uh, tobacco products. E-cigarettes are going to be equally transformative. Uh, it can save a billion lives. Anytime someone attacks a promising alternative to a massive problem, then you have to ask why. The answer is money. Money and one of the most fascinating alliances in history. Well, there are lots of forces at play, um, you know, pro-vaping and, uh, and anti-vaping, and it's, it's hugely complex. The war on vaping began with the FDA's attack, but they weren't the only ones on their side. To fully understand this alliance that formed, we need to go to the American South and the theory of the Baptists and the bootleggers. In many counties, they hold periodic votes to decide the fate of alcohol sales. An unholy alliance forms between the preachers who don't want alcohol being used in their communities and the bootleggers who are willing to sell alcohol when and where it's not legal. They're happy to help the preachers restrict alcohol sales because that kills their competition. It's a classic example of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. At the end of the day, they both drive around town with the same bumper stickers. Unfortunately, counties that vote to restrict alcohol sales have higher rates of drunk driving fatalities. We see the same two sides in the vaping wars. You have the bootleggers who are opposed to vaping for business reasons, and you have the preachers who are opposed to vaping on moralistic grounds. Well, let's talk about the bootlegger side. Remember Big Tobacco? They don't like competition for their $1 trillion business. Analysts say electronic or e-cigarettes will become a $2 billion industry worldwide by the end of the year, with some predicting sales will outpace conventional cigarettes within five to 10 years. Cigarette companies realize that e-cigarettes are now a threat to the old business. And are they? Huge threat. It's one of the very rare cases where you, you have such a controversy about the product. And to the point that people don't understand that it is the main competitor of tobacco cigarettes today. The e-cigarette is the main competitor of tobacco cigarettes. 